Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Ken Brown, class of 74, to come up and speak next. Thanks a lot, Chris. Well, as I look out of this great crowd, I want to thank every one of you, because I'm really here on behalf of all of you, all of the people who have contributed over the years, certainly over the last 12 years of this campaign, and even before that and, and ongoing to this program and to maintaining its standards and improving its facilities and improving its, its uh, equipment fleet and making sure that everyone who follows us, who have the great, as we found those great opportunities, we've, as Bob Staley has put it many times, built a bridge for the next generations to come, and that's a very important thing. Uh, I want to thank, uh, on behalf of the benefactors, not only the leadership that Bob Staley provided, and, uh, and, and you've heard a great deal about that, but I, I really do want to thank very much everyone here at the university who's had a role in making sure that this could happen. Um, it was a long, long gestation. Um, Bob gently and persistently arm-twisted for over 12 years uh, to make this happen. And, we're, and we survived, this, this project managed to survive through two major financial crises, which as you know in fundraising is just a death knell, but we managed to get here on this glorious day. Um, I want to thank in particular the staff, and the coaches, and, and the athletes. As Colin said, this was uh, a little bit of suffering through the folklore of a boathouse and to suffer through the actual construction of it uh, and miss out on, on actually enjoying the facility was a sacrifice. But Colin, I think over the years you're going to find it's worth it when you come back here and see what there is to see. Because one of, the, one of the things I wanted to quickly highlight, Chris alluded to it a little bit, is how important it was to all of us who had this project in mind that we have some place to showcase the great history of this program. This is the oldest intercollegiate sport at Cornell. It began shortly after the university was founded in 1865. I think we had crews in the water in 1865. The first national championship was 1875. We have had 146 years of great, great history, great stories to tell, championships, fantastic coaching, great athletes, and thousands and thousands of men and women who came through this program, each with their little individual story to tell about what Cornell Rowing did for them while they were here, but more importantly, what it did for them when they left Cornell. All of us have those stories. And I think it's important to have a place where we can showcase a little bit of that history. And it's not just for alumni to come back and visit or recruits to see, but I can remember distinctly even in that small little lobby room that we had in the Collier Boathouse, spending some really important moments after practice, waiting to get on the water on a rainy day of some sort, and just looking at the trophies and the pictures and the lists of who had come before. And even knowing some of them, like the 71 crew, uh, who were sort of legends in, in their own time with us, it was as I look back on it, something seminal in the way that I began to think about my own life and the, and the unfolding of it. And as I try to tell my children today, it is a long, long haul. <laughs> it's not a sprint. It's a little bit more like a marathon, and we need to understand from where we've come and where we're headed. So this tradition room is going to be a place to, uh, to really celebrate this, and I'm glad to see it there. We persisted in making sure that it was going to happen. There were a lot of other important things to happen in this center, but to those of us who've been through the program, this was very, very important. I'm going to introduce to you two members of that great 57 class who were instrumental and actually were here on the day that this cornerstone was laid, and now we're here again 54 years later uh, to lay another cornerstone, Bob Staley and Phil Graven. But, um, to make mention of one other member of the class of 57 that we should all recognize today in, in the sense of thinking about history. Bernie Horton was for many years a member of the Cornell Rowing Association and was our official and unofficial historian. 
Bernie was, you know, a pretty good coxswain, but didn't cox your boat. <laughs> Managed to get a bronze medal in the Pan Am Games in 63, was a fantastic engineer, and did some really amazing work, all the way from aerospace to dairy products, world renowned, and was a great supporter of women's rowing, and was a supporter and a believer in rowing all of his life. He was a believer in the tradition and the history. And sadly, about halfway through this campaign in 2006, he left us. But I know that he's here today, smiling a big, broad smile, to see this shrine to the ongoing story of the glory and history that is Cornell Rowan. Guys, I had a